Hey everybody, this is Fernando from the Rollback Podcast. And you know what day it is? Uh, actually it's Friday. I'm recording this on a Friday. While getting into the show Shameless. It's the first time I've seen it. I've only ever seen clips, but it's actually pretty decent. But aside from that, that is not the point. What is the point for today's podcast is Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 2. Now, that already sounds very odd to say because, for the most part, we always get all of the, you know, all the stuff, all the episodes in one go. And this is the first time that they have cut it up into two volumes, at least for Stranger Things. Now... <clears throat> Let's go over the premise for season four real quick, just to refresh ourselves. Set in March 1986, eight months after the events of the third season, the fourth season is split between different plot lines. This is a very Lord of the Rings way to do this season. Uh, because, yeah, it's all separated within plot lines. We have... Uh, 11, uh, Paul Reiser and, uh, a Joker. I, I call him Joker because I always remember him from, uh, um, Full Metal Jacket. Um, we have their storyline going. We have Will, we have Mike, we have Jonathan, we have, uh, Argyle. Their storyline, trying to get to 11. Then we have Max, we have Lucas, we have... We have uh, Dustin, we have Steve, we have Nancy, we have Eddie Munson, um, and Lucas's sister. I don't know why I'm blanking on the name. Um, and we have Joyce, we have Hopper, we have Murray, and the other two Russian guys in Russia. Like, there's so many storylines going on in this season. That's probably why each episode is a lot longer than usual. And Volume 2 did not disappoint. With uh, episode 7 coming in at an hour 25, and then episode 8 coming in at two and a half hours. That is easily uh, three more episodes worth of content. Um, do I think they should have done it? Uh, we'll see. Uh, but first, let me, uh, let me continue on with the premise. Now, the first plotline takes place in Hawkins, where several teenagers are killed in mysterious ways. It features Dustin, Max, Lucas, Erica, Steve, Nancy, Robin, and Eddie, the leader of the Hellfire Club. Uh, And Eddie becomes the prime murder suspect and is hunted down by Jason Carver, the douchebag basketball captain, uh, because he believes that Eddie killed his girlfriend, Chrissy using satanic powers. Dustin and friends are investigating to discover what is doing these murders and to clear Eddie's name, whom they figure out we are dealing with a new powerful being called Vecna. The second plot line involves Mike, Eleven, Will, Jonathan, and their new home in California. And the third plot line follows Joyce Murray and Jim Hopper who is still alive in Russia, and they are working on getting him out of a Russian gulag. <clears throat> now, uh, I already reviewed Volume 1. Uh, we are left with the the cliffhanger that Vecna is one. He is the original number one of... Um, he's the original number one in... <laughs> Um, Papa's uh, experiments. So, we finally get to meet number one. Uh, A little backstory about what happened to him. He murdered all of his siblings, uh, 11, at the age of 8, I believe. Sent him packing to the Upside Down uh, without knowing her true powers. Um, we come to find out that Vecna is the one that has been behind everything. Because at the beginning of Season 4, we were like, Oh, well, is Vecna working for the Mind Flayer? Are they companions? 
Um, I know that was one of the biggest, um, not tropes, uh, biggest questions. Like, is Vecna a separate entity or is he the top dog? And we come to find out he is the tippy top dog of this new season. Uh, he, when he arrived in the Upside Down, it was pretty much desolate, uh, from what I recall. Um, there was Demogorgons. Uh, just kind of roaming around and he took over the control of the particles which we come to call the mind flayer and took over control of the demogorgons and he was sending these to our world to take out 11 to pretty much take over the world and then when he came to find out that Eleven is very much alive and very much strong, um, he tried his best to try and take her out, but he kept getting thwarted until season three, where his main preoccupation was to take out Eleven, but his side preoccupation was to take away her powers, which he does. And then we come to find out that she get, she has her powers. She just forgot about them. So she gets her powers back in Season 4, Volume 2. Um, so we also get to see that happen. Now, it's interesting because this is the first time that this season has been cut into two volumes. Now I'm curious as to why they did that. I wonder if it's because of the pandemic or uh, things of that sort. Now, uh, do I mind it? No, not really. Um, the more episodes, the merrier. Uh, I love the season uh, leading up to it. This season's very different compared to prior seasons with them having more meat on the episodes. So these episodes have a lot to digest. Now, volume two. Each one, again, an hour 25, two and a half hours. That's a lot of shit to digest. And me and my buddies and my girlfriend and my buddy's wife, we all binged the two episodes. And it's pretty much like watching a long movie. And that's because my girlfriend bitched and moaned about watching Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Now, I think she is wrong to do it because Lord of the Rings The Return of the King is probably one of the best movies ever made. So, uh, yeah, going on record. She is wrong. And so, now what did I think about episode 8? Papa. That's where we see that, oh, Papa, he, the motherfucker hasn't changed at all. He, uh, Brenner, he just goes back on his word and tries to keep Eleven there. Basically saying, like, you won't last, you're gonna die, yada, 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 you need my help, blah, 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 horseshit, horseshit, horseshit. And um, ties up Owens and is pretty much going to screw him over and get them in trouble. Um, while Will, uh, Will, Mike, Jonathan, and Argyle are on the hunt for Eleven. Um, we also, you know, and then also jumping back to the, the Hawkins crew, um, we see... What happened to Vecna? How he became who he became? And pretty much Nancy's telling them that Vecna is planning on opening a super gate uh, with these four mini gates. Now, we've only had three gates open because there's only been three murders. Max is supposed to be the fourth murder. And so they devise a plan to lure Vecna into an attack so that they can attack him while he's distracted. Um, so with episode eight, um, personally, I loved it. Uh, I thought we got to see reconnections. Uh, we got to see Joyce and Hopper reconnect. Um, we got to see Brenner finally die, which was another thing that kind of griped me about bringing Brenner back is that they never really say how he lived in season one. He just lived 
They don't mention how. He just lived, which kind of annoys me. Another thing that annoys me is that they still haven't released Season 3 on Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray. Fucking get on it, dude. I'm a collector. I have Season 1 and Season 2. I need Season 3 and Season 4. Get on this shit, Netflix. Um, but yes, uh, Episode 8, a little long. Uh, did I complain? No, I loved it. I loved how long it was. I loved it. It was very action-packed. And I love that we got to see these reconnections going on. Now, episode 9, Piggyback. That one, whew, that's a full-blown movie. Two and a half hours. That is a full-blown movie. Now, that's where Max, Lucas, and everyone's going to enact this plan to take out Vecna uh, while being chased by those psychotic uh, uh, basketball players. Um, and you can't really talk about episode 9 without... Man, this is arguably the best clip from the entirety of Stranger Things. And it's Eddie Munson playing the guitar solo. Or not the guitar solo itself, but the guitar opening of Master of Puppets. Now, when I saw this, the trailer of Stranger Things Season 4... I remember seeing the snippet of Eddie playing on the trailer, playing the guitar. And I remember when Volume 1 came out, I was like, well, where the fuck is this scene? And then, I mean, coming to find out when it didn't pop up, we are like, ah, shit, it's coming out Volume 2. And I think that scene just fucking stole the entire... It was definitely one of the standing out moments of that episode. It was amazing. I loved it. I mean, especially as a as a kid who grew up as a metalhead and who grew up and was considered a weirdo because they were a metalhead. Like, I loved it. I loved every fucking second of that of that scene. Of him jamming out to Master of Puppets. And then we Man, that death was rough. That death. Because, again, like, I mean, whoever grew up like how I did, like, we're the weirdos because we liked video games or we liked goofy, dorky shit. Like, to see Eddie go out and to go out a hero because he always said that he wasn't a hero. Like, man, that was, that was a rough fucking scene. Um, I loved it. I loved that whole scene. I loved him and Dustin's chemistry. Um, and I brought this up to my buddies when we were watching. I was like, dude, Dustin doesn't have a dad. Like, his father figures are Steve and, and Eddie. Steve teaching him how to be cool and stuff. And Eddie teaching him how to be, like, himself. Like, it's crazy. Like, he, he doesn't have a dad. Um... And yeah, that's for me. That's one of the most, definitely one of the most top ten uh, memorable scenes. Uh, Russia. We have Jim. Uh, we have uh, we have that whole crew, and we come to find out that the Russians are better than the Americans at investigating the Upside Down because they had captured demo demo dogs. They captured a Demogorgon. They captured the fucking Mind Flayer particles. Like, they did everything that the Americans couldn't do. The Americans couldn't even capture the Demogorgon. Like, what? But yeah, uh, so they go back to the prison to try to kill... Uh, the Demogorgon, Demodogs, everything to, because in their mind they're thinking this will give the kids a chance um, in Hawkins, because if you can take out these things, it's a hive mind, so it will hurt it will hurt, uh, you know uh, Vecna but in reality it didn't but it's that they're trying, that's what they're trying to do um we see Vegna and Eleven finally face up heavyweight battle, and yeah, Vegna and Eleven very very good. Uh, granted, Vegna has more pr- 
practice with his power, so he does have the upper hand, and he does, you know, we don't know. We don't know. At the end of this episode, he wins, technically. Uh, Max was murdered for a minute. Um, blind, too. Uh, they he broke her legs and her arms like how they did to the other victims. Um, Eleven did something with her powers to make sure that Max didn't die, which is interesting because we don't know if Max can see. We don't know if Max um, will be like how she was. So that's interesting in itself. Um, But yes, Vecna wins. Uh, Steve, Nancy, and... Ah, fuck, what's her name? Uh, Maya Hawk. (laughs) Her character, I love her character. Her character is definitely one of my favorite ones. Because she's a fucking klutz, goofy idiot. But... Those are my favorite characters. And they fucking light up Vecna with some Molotov cocktails. Which, I thought Nancy should have lit him up with that sawed off shotgun. But whatever. Uh, They light him on fire. They hurt him bad. He takes off. Uh, We all know if... What's he gonna do? If he's gonna come back or or what? Um, We do know that he's healing. And he's gonna... He's going to fight. And with Max dying, the fourth gate is opened and it becomes a super gate. And right now, Hawkins is being evacuated. There is a giant gate in the middle of Hawkins with the upside down bleeding into Hawkins. Um, Eddie Munson died a hero. Uh, Dustin made sure his uncle knew that, even though... The town still thinks that he was a murderer. Um, We get to see a a reconciliation of the entire group. We get to see Mike with Hopper. And for me, one of my favorite scenes of Mike and Hopper's in season two. Where Mike and Hopper hash it out after Mike finds out that Hopper was hiding Eleven. Like, for me, that's one of the best scenes ever. Ever in this entire show. Um, we get to see a reconciliation between Eleven and Hopper. Um, that was nice to see. Um, but yeah, season four, volume two, man. Way to fucking hit everyone in the feels. Uh, season four, volume two. Great, amazing, I loved it. I truly, truly loved it. And it's going to make season five interesting because I'm just like, are they going to do the same thing? I hope they don't do the volume shit again. Um, hopefully it comes out within a year. Remember, volume uh, season four and season three have a two-year gap because it came out in July 2019. And this one didn't come out until June 2022. So, hopefully we get to see that come out in not such a long gap. But, I'm curious. What did you all think of Stranger Things? I know that Eddie releases this on YouTube. So, I mean, if you're following us on YouTube, I'd love to see the comments. Um, even on Facebook, uh, comment below on the post. I wanted to see what you all thought. Uh, me personally, I'm a huge Stranger Things fan. I have a corner with Stranger Things posters. I love their posters. They're my favorite. But, yeah. Um, Volume 2, Stranger Things Season 4. I give it a... I would definitely give it a five stars. Um, it was definitely one of the best 
things to come out this year as far as show wise like i loved it i thought it was amazing um can't wait for uh season five hope it's amazing but yeah, that is it, everybody. This is Fernando from your Rollback Podcast, where you can hear every podcast you want. Uh, you check us out on uh, Google Play, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you get your podcast, YouTube, you'll find us. Um, please check us out. I don't know when Eddie's putting this one up, so please check us out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is it for today's podcast, everybody. This is Fernando from the Rollback Podcast. This was your rollback review of Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 2. Let's cut it.